In this training series, I'm gonna show you how you can get started making quality video content for your YouTube ads and your YouTube channel using Adobe Premiere Pro. Hi, my name is Nicholas Sayers. I'm the founder here at Major League Video Marketing where I show business owners how to use YouTube ads and video marketing to grow their brand, grow their business, and grow their bottom line. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe now, click the little bell notification so you can stay up to date when we release new content that's gonna show you how you can use YouTube ads to grow your business. Most business owners assume that when it comes to making effective content for their YouTube channel or their video ads, that they need to rush out and they need to get all the fancy camera equipment like drones, gimbals, tripods, cables and extensions and all these fancy and expensive cameras and that's just not the case. If you want to make effective content you don't need to have that stuff. Now if you want to make quality content it really begins with knowing some very basic strategies and techniques with Adobe Premiere Pro. This video is the first video of an eight-part training series that's gonna walk you through step-by-step click-by-click on how to use Adobe Premiere to make that quality looking content. If you're just now watching, you can always click down in the description where I'm going to link the eight different videos in the training series that's going to help you get started with Adobe Premiere. We're going to do our best to make each video very short and very concise. I want to go slow and I want to be methodical so that nothing is left out and you know exactly where to click on, exactly what you're doing, and my workflow for making good quality content. Now for the duration of this video, I'm gonna take you into my screen, into Adobe Premiere. I'm gonna show you what buttons to click on, what to do so that you can set up your project correct the first time, and then we're also gonna look at some basic navigation so you know where everything is and how to get started. Now before I do that, I know how these trainings typically go, and the presenter will speak a mile a minute. I don't wanna do that, I wanna go slow, and I wanna be methodical so that you understand this correctly. So if at any point I lose you, I just want you to comment down below, let me know where you get lost, I will reply to every comment that I see and I'll try my best to help you out. Now when I open up Premiere on my computer, it gives me the option for a new project or to open an existing project. For the sake of our illustration, I'm going to click New Project. And I'm just going to give it a new name. This is just going to be MYL Adobe 3. And the only thing that you need to work with, worry about is the name and where you're going to save it. All these other settings are pretty much going to be standard and they're going to work fine for everything that you're going to do. Uh, just as a tip, one thing that I like to do so that I can work on my projects anywhere that I have Adobe Premiere is I prefer to save them into the cloud. Uh, so if you use Google Drive or Dropbox and you can stream these files, that is my suggestion to you. I'm going to hit OK. And the first thing that you're going to notice is you have a really blank canvas here. And if you don't know where everything is, this can get really confusing. But essentially, I just want to bring your attention to the top navigation here. These are different workflows that if you were wanting to focus on just audio, you can click on audio. If you were wanting to just focus on the effects or color, you could just go into there and there's already predetermined workflows and uh, stylings so that you can kind of see with the different paneling. But if I just click here, you can see that these are into different quadrants. And these are really the ones that I want to focus on here. So at the top left, you have your effect controls. When we bring in a new clip into our timeline and we are working on a video file or an audio file, this will allow us to adjust the size, the opacity, the rotation. Uh, if we do different filters, we can adjust all of that. Over here is where we will show a preview of our video clip and this will just be our preview monitor. Down below is our bin and this is going to be where all the files are going to be stored when we import new clips, whether they be video clips or audio clips. And then over to the right is our timeline. And this is going to work from left to right, top to bottom. If I bring in a new clip and I do control I for uh, the shortcut to bring in a new clip, I'm just going to bring in this video file here. It's going to populate in my bin. I'm going to click and drag. You can see the little fist there. It's dragging over to my timeline and then it fills the effect controls and the timeline. You'll see here that we have video one, video two, video three. These work in layers, so whatever's on top will be shown first. Then you have audio one, audio two, audio three. Because this clip is just one video clip, it's gonna default to video one and audio one. And I can see how this just kind of works here. I can adjust the effect controls by clicking and dragging. I can do new positions. I can do all that. Now I'm just going to reset this to 100% on the scale. I'm going to do 960 here, 540. And why are those numbers important? This works on an X and Y axis. If I go to sequence, 
and I go sequence settings, I can see that my project is set up by 1920 by 1080. This is the uh, standard settings for high definition video. If I just hit cancel, so 960 is half of 1920, 540 is half of 1080. These two things put this right in the middle. And that's how your navigation is going to work. If I want to kind of work in different workflows, I can come to audio, I can come to effects, I can even go to uh, color, I can see that it disappeared there. And sometimes Premiere will do weird things like that. So I'm gonna go to Windows, I'm gonna do workspaces, and I'm gonna do all panels. That should bring me back. If I go to color here, I can kind of adjust my color. But you'll notice that if you're in effects, you'll be able to pretty much do all of that from the effects panel, and that's typically what I like to do. Uh, but that is your basic navigation. You can see that it auto saves there. While I'm there, let me go ahead and bring you to edit, where you go down to preferences, and you can set the generic preferences for your account. So if I go to auto save, I have mine defaulted to save every two minutes. It's important that if you are not manually saving your project, uh, continuously that you set a default there to kind of help you out. I want to save it every two minutes in case there's a crash or something goes wonky or backwards. I'm at least not too far behind. The last thing I'm going to show you in this video is how to use keyframes in your effects control. Keyframes are just starting points and stopping points for particular movements or actions. So what I mean by that is I have my clip selected here. I'm going to come up here to scale and position. And you see when I click on these, they're automatically turning blue. And you can see opacity a lot of times will automatically de be defaulted as that. When I toggle these on or off, it's adding new keyframes. So you see this little keyframe right here. I'm going to toggle this off and it will go away. Let me quickly toggle it back on. And we're just going to have a starting point on the timeline right here. And the starting point is with these settings. It's gonna be positioned here, and it's gonna be this big. But let's say I wanna zoom in slightly so it gives kind of a really interesting effect. I'm just gonna move it here, and you can see it moves it here. I'm gonna click on these little dots here, and if, if you can't see them, they're a little scrunched up. You can always just click and drag, and gives you just a little bit more space. So if I click on the keyframe icon here, it's gonna add a new one. And let's say I wanna zoom in just a little bit. That's more than a little bit, but you'll see the just for uh, dramatic effect. And then I'm gonna click here on the axis that brings it down, and I'm just gonna drag it here. And what that's gonna look like is it's gonna create that motion. So if I go to the beginning of the keyframe, and play it. Editing skills. If you know what to click on, what to do, you can make your content sing and be very creative. Now, most business owners assume that when it comes to making quality content, that you can see it creates that movement because it has these starting points and these stopping points. You could do this with rotation. If I wanted to spin the clip, I don't know why I would ever want to do that, but if I wanted to do that, I could. If I want to uh, go sc scale or position, I could. I can also change the opacity so I could fade something in or out. If I want to create new movement, I would simply just create a new keyframe by clicking on it here. You can see it adds it again. And I'm just going to go back to the default by typing in here 100%. And I'm going to go back to the middle, which was 960 by 540. And if I just move it here, it'll go back to what it now, was. So we're zooming in here. When it comes to making quality content, effective content, that they have to rush out and they have to buy all the fancy gear and equipment. You notice how it went really fast. The, the more I drag this out, the slower that's going to be because it has to take more time to get there. The faster I want it to be, the closer I make these. So I'm just going to bring it in as close as possible. They'll go on Amazon you see how, how fast that was? And so that's how you uh, do your keyframes. That's how you move things in and out on the effects control panel. Now in the next video that you click on right here, I'm going to show you all the keyboard shortcuts that you're going to want to know. That's going to make your workflow simple. Everything from saving to importing to exporting, everything that you're going to need to just move around on your keyboard to just make things very easy and less complicated for you using keyboard shortcuts. So make sure you click on that video right now so you can start that next training. I'll see you in that next video.